Climate Watch, a recent study shows a powerful current system is moving more slowly than it has in the last millennium. The Gulf Stream is part of what's called the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, or AMOC. It plays a role in redistributing heat within our climate system. But according to a report published in the Nature Geoscience Journal, experts say the slowdown is directly related to our planet's warming climate. And they warn it could have a devastating impact on global climate patterns. For more on this, let's bring in Peter Domenical. He's an oceanographer and paleoclimatologist. Peter is also the president and director of the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. Peter, welcome. Thanks very much for being with us. Thank you, Elaine, for having me tonight. So, Peter, what are some reasons that this slowdown is happening in the first place? Right, Elaine. So it really comes down to that uh, the oceans are climate and the climates are the oceans. That is, the oceans are fundamentally responsible for giving us the climate that we live in. Uh, the, the main points to take away are that the oceans are changing. And this study has shown that the, the oceans are uh, the, the strength of the Gulf Stream, that is, the flowing of the water that's in this gyral circulation going around from the equator to the east coast of the United States, uh, south of Greenland and then down along the coast of uh, Africa, that gyral current is rather stable, but there's a branch that goes to the north and that one looks like to, it looks to be weakening. This is part of this conveyor belt circulation where the water cools and sinks and it's called the overturning circulation because it's like a conveyor belt. The new evidence is showing that this conveyor belt appears to be the slowest, the weakest it's ever been in centuries, even over the last millennium. And so that concerns us because this is really the linchpin component of the global climate system. It's fundamentally important to all that we hold dear. So can you break this down for us, Peter? How is this change in the AMOC impacting our climate system right now? Right, so the easiest way to sort of take this home is that if you pick a place on the planet, let's say London, at the latitude of London today, they grow roses. But if you go to the same latitude over in Canada, you grow polar bears. The reason for that difference is because of the oceans. That is the heat that's transported from the equator by the oceans is, is a result of this AMOC, this overturning circulation. And so what's happening is that if the AMOC slows down, it introduces these really large changes in climate that would be felt all around the planet. Now, it's really important to emphasize that what this study has shown is that over the last many decades, even the last century or so, the AMOC appears to be the weakest it's ever been for centuries, even the last millennium. But it's important to, to understand that our short observations of the actual physical observations of the AMOC strength uh, going over the last five to 20 years or so do not indicate anything near a shutdown or even a slowdown. So our short little window of observations um, indicate that it, it, the, the system is still stable. Okay, so that was going to be my next question, is what is the likelihood that this current, this conveyor belt, I like that imagery, um, completely stops, and what would be some potential consequences of that? You're saying right now stability appears uh, as though it's there at the moment anyway. Right, so one of the fundamental uh, contributions of an institution like mine and other research institutions is that we provide these, these observations that allow us to have a real-time monitor on the planet. But when we take this longer term perspective, that's where we're seeing this slowdown. And uh, the reason why it's important is that it really causes a, a large changes in climate uh, elsewhere. And the reason for it is because Greenland is melting, the planet is warming up, and that runoff from Greenland, that freshwater runoff is making a freshwater lid. And that's what's slowing down the current, we believe. And uh, so the reason why it's important is that this is the biggest component of the climate system. It is responsible for half of the heat that's transported from the equator to the poles. And so if it changes, we see really large changes around the planet as well. So it's really the linchpin component of the climate system. And uh, so we know that climate is changing. This is the first time that we have uh, a, a suspicion that one of the really biggest components of the climate system uh, is in transition. 
You mentioned Greenland a, a moment ago. Is that part of this area known as the cold blob? Explain to our viewers what that is exactly and how does that factor into all of this? Right. So the observations that we have right now is that the, the Gulf Stream itself appears to be slowing down a little bit. There's this mysterious cold blob, and it makes it sound relatively benign, but this is something that's half the size of the continental United States, and it's been persistent for a very long time. And it's in the half face the of the Half the size of the planet. continental United States, Peter. I just, I just have to pause for a moment because it's extraordinary. It's hard to fathom, actually, that size, that area. And so that's what the size of this, quote unquote, cold blob is. Exactly. It's, I mean, this is a big deal. And then on top of that, it's been like this for a while, and it's in the middle of the global ocean that itself is warming. You know, the oceans are accumulating 95% of the excess heat that comes from the rise of uh, carbon dioxide uh, greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. So the rest of the oceans are warming up, except for this <laughs> cold blob just south of Greenland. And what we know is that as the uh, circulation as the AMOC starts to slow down, one of the fingerprints, if you will, one of the climate fingerprints is this cold blob south of Greenland. And that's why it's such a concern. It's, it's an indicator of what we think can be happening. So, you know, Peter, taking a step back, what is the solution to all of this? Is there something that can be done now to alleviate this? Is this going to require governments around the world working together? Are there things that can be done on an individual basis to kind of alleviate what is taking place? Right, Elaine. So you had asked the question, you know, what's the probability and uh, of, of the uh, AMOC shutting down? And the current estimates are there's roughly a two and three probability that it will slow down but not shut down. And it's relatively unlikely, a one in three chance that it will shut down in the next uh, century. So those are pretty scary odds, actually. And so, um, you know, what we can do is that uh, the, the, the cause of this is fundamentally tied to the rise of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. It's, it's a direct link between our emissions and that outcome. So we have the power, we really do have the power to um, control our fate. This is the take home message here is not to throw up your hands and say, uh, you know, the biggest part of the climate system has changed and there's nothing we can do about it. It's actually the opposite. This is in fact, the ocean is doing us a big solid right now. It's taking up carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. It's taking up the excess heat. It's buffering us from the worst of climate change. And it's our obligation, really, to return that favor and uh, stop the increase in, in CO2. So the answer is to uh, make our uh, economies more carbon neutral, to look toward greener energy solutions. And in fact, this is one of the things that the current administration is really focusing on. So that gives me a lot of hope. All right. Well, Peter Domenical, it is fascinating to hear about what is taking place and just the enormity of the, the potential changes to climate, but also good to hear that there are things that can be done to address the situation. Peter, thanks very much for your time. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Elaine.